Hey, welcome back. Comfort for life here. I'm so glad to have you. Our welcome, welcome to part two of being a Congolese. I uh, hope you watched the first part where I talked about uh, the food we eat. Uh, and today I'll be talking a little bit on uh, culture, the way we live in community in Congo. Uh, and also I'll be talking about how we approach authority. I told you I can go on and on and on speaking about the Congolese culture, being born in Congo up to adulthood. <laughs> I have a lot I can talk uh, about Congo, so stay tuned. And when I talk of Congo, just remember it's DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, because there are two Congo. That's also another confusion that people make. There is Congo Brazzaville, and there's also DRC, DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. That's where I come from. So, community life in Congo, <laughs> try not to laugh. In Congo, you don't need to book an appointment to visit someone. You know, when I came to Kenya, it's when I realized that people can actually spend the whole day with the door closed in the house. So in Congo, people will leave the house open, their door open, because people keep coming and go. People come and go and are noticed. People don't notify you that they are coming to your house. And when they come, they will expect to be treated as if they were part of everything that was happening there. No need for budget. <laughs> Wait for that. So, it's only in Congo. I don't know if it's also in your country. If this is something that happens in your country, type down there. <laughs> Did you know that in Congo you can actually pack your bag, leave the village, leave the house where you're living, and come to somebody's house without, without telling them that you're coming? back or just tell them I will be here for a few days and you end up spending the whole year in that house. <laughs> That's Congo for you. So even a family, you might find uh, a whole family coming to, to somebody's house. Let me say, I'm living here, like if I was in Congo, you find a family somewhere. A member of a family will just pack with children, husbands, everyone, everyone, they come and live with you. And you don't need to ask them, where are you going? Where are you going back? <laughs> and if you have to let them go, you have to find an arrangement of how they're going to leave your house because you can't leave them go empty-handed. That's how the community life is in Congo. So there's so many things that we are also doing uh, that tells of community, like sharing salt, you can go to a neighbor, ask for salt, ask for sugar, ask for, like sometimes you could even do exchange. I have a lot of flour and somebody is lacking rice, we exchange and we move on. Or oil, we share everything, absolutely everything. So the community life in Congo is on another level. So you don't need to ask for a notice, just come and you'll be treated as part of the family. Uh, so, I want to talk about dressing. You know, I talked of dressing, but it was really on, uh, it was so fast. I want to go back on dressing because there's something that I didn't address. So many people think that life in Congo is very easy. That's why people could actually uh, afford those expensive outfits, but that's not the case. In my country, there has been war since I was born. I've never seen my country peaceful. Uh, where I come from, it might not be so serious, but you won't spend a day without finding, like finish your whole day, without finding somebody will walk on your door begging for food or tell you their family have been killed, somebody has been, like they tell you some traumatizing stories that you like what the hell of a country this is. So war in Congo is on another level. This is also another appeal for you who is watching this video. I know you are a friend of Congo. You saw the name Congo and you clicked on this video. So keep our country in prayer. Talk about authority in Congo. 
How do we approach authority in Congo? In Congo, when somebody has money, when somebody is well educated, when somebody is good financially, so it's it's seen from the way they dress, it's seen from the way they, they approach. So it's not easy for you to just talk to somebody who, who has money. Unlike Kenya, where I had talked of how it's very easy, a lecturer can give you a call, come to class. In Congo, hey, Congo for you. A lecturer is like in a little heaven up there, and then you guys are down. <laughs> That's how authority, authority is very, very key. <laughs> authority is very valued in Congo, and uh, yeah, it's a lifestyle, and you can't, you can't change it. Somebody has to be given their respect. <laughs> we, we don't call people by name, and if somebody is older than you, uh, you call them. I wonder how in Kenya uh, you can call a house help auntie so, but when it goes to a pastor, you call them by their own, by their name. So, uh, respect is uh, very, it's, it, it's important in Congo. We respect authority and we approach them, we give people their, their respect their, when they are older than, than you. So, going back to Lingala, um, Talking of culture in Congo will be a bit difficult because we have 400 plus tribes in Congo. So speaking of languages and all those kinds of stuff, uh, it will be so, it's so complex. So when I speak of language, uh, as, it, as I said earlier, we have four national languages, that is Swahili, Kikongo, Chiluba, uh, and Lingala, for those who think Lingala is a song, so Lingala is a language. Lingala is not a song, it's a mad part of our national languages. So, the reason why Lingala is so famous, uh, it's because so many artists have adopted Lingala. So, so many songs are sung in Lingala, so it has become a fashion. So, I told you I can go on and on and on and on uh, talking about culture in Congo. Let's talk about studies in Congo. School. <laughs> in Congo, there's nothing like studying for two hours, three hours, four hours, uh, the class is done. That's credit hours. Uh, we don't have such in Congo. So, when you join university, you go to school from eight to 5 p.m. 5, sometimes 6 p.m. From 5, you'll get a break uh, at 1 for lunch, uh, and maybe 15 minutes in between uh, when you start for 4 hours, 15 minutes break, something like that. But you spend the whole day in school, and you study from Monday. The school where I was going, you go up to Friday. But there are schools where they study even on Saturday. But on Saturday, they will end maybe at 3 p.m. Uh, now imagine, what time will you get to, to move around, do business while studying, uh, have a job when you're in school? When? When will you get that time? So another thing about school in Congo, we buy syllabus. So when you get a lecturer, uh, they come up with notes. So when they, they come up with notes, so every student will have to buy that syllabus. Okay, they buy, and if, if that's, I think that's what qualifies you to be part of that class first. You have to be on the list of people who have given their $5, $10, depending on the price of the syllabus, uh, who will get, who will buy the syllabus, if, for you to qualify to be part of that class. So another thing, uh, Classes in Congo are so crowded. You'll find the class like, should I say supermarket? No. <laughs> like a church. So it's so spacious. And the lecturer is up in front with a microphone. And you know, it's just for your own good that you buy that syllabus. Because if you don't follow with your syllabus, you won't, you won't get what the lecturer is saying. And yeah, that's how studies are in Congo. <laughs> Another thing, there's a lot to say, there's a lot to talk about, um, about studies in Congo. Also, we have a class representative, just like here in Kenya. Uh, 
who coordinates everything. He's the one who comes up with a list of people who have bought the syllabus. So even if he has his own, you get something from the syllabus and you know, all coordinating the whole class. Uh, sometimes, especially those who do IT. Those who do IT are about, the school I was going to, they were about 500. So imagine a class of 500 people. Um, because I was in another domain that was English, so we were like 100. That was the smallest class that has 100 people. So, when you're in Congo, you want to get the privilege to be married, as I am, and be in school at the same time. So, that's why parents will always tell you, finish your studies and get married. Uh, that's why you realize, let me go to Berlin, it connects somehow with school. Because what you find that most people who are married in Congo don't find the opportunity to go to school. Because if you are full time in school, when you get time to take care of your husband, children, and all those responsibilities, being a parent first is, is a full time job. So how will you get time for all those other things? So you guys are so privileged to have a lot of time and who are really using time. Let me say using time in court. You'll find somebody on TikTok from morning to night. So, because you have a lot of free time that you don't know how to really utilize that time. But anyway, everyone, everyone has the way they manage their time. And yeah, but you guys have a lot of latitude when it comes to time because you, you are okay, you're free. So, <laughs> listen carefully. This one, is, this one is going to melt your heart. So, you know, in Congo, when you study, we do like, let me say, for a semester, you have 10 units that you have to do. So you don't book units. When you enroll for that semester, you have to do all those 10 units. You get? When you do those 10 units, at the end of every unit, you do exam. You do exam, your marks is there, recorded. At the end of the semester, they are going to come up with all those units, the marks you got, and the units you failed you're going to do the second session of exam. So you retake the exam, that's what you say. Retake, you retake the exam that you failed. So when you retake the exam, if you fail, if you fail like at the end of the year, you fail, you fail like fail, even after second session, you failed so many units that uh, even the average percentage takes you below uh, the, the, the maximum, why? The maximum percentages of like passing the class. You repeat the whole year. <laughs> you don't repeat the units. And in Congo, you stop in your studies. You don't stop in between the semester. I want to stop here. I will come back and continue where I left. No. Like I left my country when I was in my second year of university. So if I want to go back, first, those years have expired. I will come and start a degree from, because there's so many years, they left seven years ago. So I think I will have to start again from the beginning. So that's how we do. Uh, we don't continue from where you start. You, when you fail, you start the whole year. You would repeat the whole year. So that's how studies are in Congo. There's a lot you can talk about this country. This is a very rich, huge, what should I say? Gent, rich, but you are free. Yeah, so it, it's a lot. It's a lot you can talk about this country. So stay tuned. What I had for you today. Um, and if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and share this video uh, to a friend. Tell a friend, tell a friend that there is this girl here. It's pretty face. You can see <laughs> all the good things. So it can convince them to come here. Share this video, join the family, free of charge. Subscribe, subscribe, until we meet again. Ciao. Bye.